Cool. Oh, great. Oh, keyboard assistant. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yay. Okay. There we go. All right. So, hi, I'm Olga. Uh, I am from Chan Zuckerberg Biohub. Um, you may also know me from Twitter because I defended my PhD in a quinceanera address, um, which got a lot of Twitter hype. Anyway, you may have seen me there. That's a, I am the same person. Uh, so as a brief overview of what we'll be talking about today, um, I'll first give you an introduction to what CZ Biohub is, what our relationship is with CZI, because I get this question a lot, um, what the structure of the Biohub is, uh, a brief, brief, brief um, introduction to what my research is so that you kind of have an idea about what motivated me to use Nextflow, um, how Nextflow has been at CZ Biohub, and kind of the timeline, I think an overview of um, our growth. You got your photo? Okay. <laughs> so first of all, Chan's Zuckerberg Initiative and CZ Biohub are not the same organization. Uh, they have the same first two words of their names, and the last word is different, and the last word is important. Uh, Chan Zuckerberg Initiative is a, uh, I would describe them as more of a grant-giving organization. You may have seen their grants for single-cell RNA-seq, human cell atlas, um, imaging, neurodegeneration. Uh, and one of their projects is science, uh, specifically focusing on grants and open source software. They also do healthcare. Uh, they also work on uh, policy, criminal justice reform in the United States. They also work on integrating K through 12 education with healthcare. They also work on helping teachers uh, buy houses where near where they teach. So science is but one of the things that they do. Whereas CZ Biohub is a standalone, research only. Biomedical Research Institute. So, I can't help you with your grant, <laughs> even if I could. <laughs> even if I could, it would be a conflict of interest, so, sorry. So, Chan Zuckerberg Biohub, CZ Biohub, founded in 2016, um, just uh, three years ago, um, with a grant for $600 million over um, over 10 years. So we have money for 10 years. Um, we are located in Mission Bay uh, in San Francisco. So this is the CZ Biohub um, location. We're actually in an old Illumina space. Uh, and this is where now is the new Warrior Stadium from the NBA basketball team. Do you know what basketball is here? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, NBA <laughs> Warriors team here. <laughs> uh, yeah, and UCSF is here. Uh, so we have, um, so it's based in San Francisco. Uh, we have collaborations and uh, with UCSF, Stanford, and Berkeley, and satellite facilities like room, either a room slash a basement with no windows at Stanford. Um, I think we have no windows at Berkeley either, but it's a room. Uh, and um, yeah, so interestingly, this is the first organization that has brought together these three powerhouse universities. Um, for whatever reason, they never collaborated much before. So the official stated goal of the, of the CZ Biohub is to cure, prevent, manage, or treat all disease by 2100, uh, which does seem insane. Uh, I would say, well, you know, if I am drinking my Kool-Aid, then uh, I would... Um, remind you that a hundred years ago we did not have antibiotics, we did not have targeted cancer therapies, uh, we did not have vaccines for many drugs. Uh, so I think the idea of all disease is a lot, but I think when it's not just about cures, but preventing, managing, and treating, it becomes more tenable. Uh, also, um, we have focused our work more on um, diseases of high morbidity. So not many people dying, but many people having a bad time while they're alive. So organizationally, uh, consists of three main arms. CZ Biohub Investigator Program. So these are about 100 investigators at UCSF, Stanford, and Berkeley um, funding their riskiest ideas. About half of them are, are on individual grants, and the other half are on collaborative grants that required at least one person from each institution. The technology platform development, that's where I am. Uh, this is the platforms 
Um, if you've heard of matrix teams, that's kind of the idea. There's projects and platforms. Platforms include data sciences uh, and IT, where Phoenix and I are. Uh, we also have uh, genomics, slash sequencing, uh, engineering, and microscopy. And then on the research side, we're focused on two main uh, basic biology questions, one of infectious disease and another of cell atlas or cell biology. And most of my research focuses on cell atlas projects. So what's a data sciences team? So data science is an informational information technology platform um, led by Jin Carcanius here. Oops. Uh, we are very lucky to have a wide variety of backgrounds um, and uh, diversity of thought at um, our data scientist team here. Um, we have uh, people who've come from pure math, we have people who come from physics, people who come from uh, like strong phylogenetics background, um, software engineers, hardware engineers, um, really great, and, like, and people from wet lab to dry lab, so really great, really great mix of people. Uh, we're also very lucky to have um, great compute infrastructure um, at CZ Biohub. So uh, we have a couple beefy um, CPU machines um, of 128 cores, 2 terabytes RAM that I've broken twice. Uh, and we have um, a few GPU machines as well. Um, those get often um, clogged with people doing lots of machine learning and image analysis. Um, and then we also use a good amount of cloud. Uh, we were able to finagle a great deal with the IBM Spectrum LSF cluster. So um, for someone yesterday was asking about different architectures for NF Core um, uh, pipelines, and uh, the Spectrum LSF is not x86 architecture. It is uh, PowerPC 64 Little Endian, PPC 64 LE. I don't know what's the last, when's the last time you thought about endian -ness? For me, it's been a long time since I wanted to think about that. And so all these images, x86 images can't even be built. Like you can't do a Docker build pulling down an x86 image on PPC LE, uh, 64LE. You have to do it completely from scratch. Um, thankfully, the um, IBM team we've been collaborating with has been very uh, kind to rebuild, for example, for um, RNA-seq all the dependencies for RNA-seq for that architecture and make a local Conda channel so that we can build it uh, locally there. So that's been very nice of them. Um, and uh, as you can imagine, um, lots of computation. Many, um, many of those peaks happen around um, paper submission or deadline time or grant. We don't do many grants, but some um, paper completion time. Lots of compute, lots of data. So uh, something I am extremely proud of um, and something I've been doing since I started at Biohub is informally, informal weekly training at CZ Biohub. This started out with a group called Cupcakes Encoding that uh, was geared towards beginners to um, be an extremely unintimidating environment um, for people to get started coding. Uh, we um, this worked quite well. We, this is at the time in the afternoon, and we actually ended up moving to um, the morning because I would get many, um, and, and so the cupcake people don't deliver in the morning, so we had to switch to croissants, which is, um, they're also good. And we, uh, I got many requests that people would say, oh, I'd love to come to Cupcakes and Coding, but, um, you know, if, if it's 1.30 um, and, Either I can start my experiment, my six-hour experiment now, or I go to Cupcakes and Coding, and like I, some stuff happened after lunch, I couldn't start my experiment. Now I can go to Cupcakes and Coding, and I could get home at 9 p.m., or I could get home at 7 p.m. <laughs> so they're going to choose to get home earlier. So um, if you're doing informal training with wet lab scientists, I do recommend sticking to a morning time, because that has been um, much more effective at getting people in the door. They have less of an excuse, at least. So uh, other things that have been interesting about Cupcakes and Coding, um, for whatever reason, um, someone said to me, oh, I, it's Cupcakes and Coding, that's a women's thing, right? And I was like, well, that's interesting. You think that? Um, but no. And it was really just a non-intimidating environment. And however that inter interpreted to women, I don't know why. Um, but 
I have done, if you're familiar with um, software and data carpentry, I've done their instructor training. Um, I think everyone who interacts with any what, anyone interacting with anyone who knows slightly less than them, which is everybody, uh, should take it because it really, um, I think, humbles you and makes you realize how many steps there are to get to where you have gotten. And um, even like for copies and coding, I, um, so it alternates between tutorials and office hours. Uh, it used to be just tutorials and then people like, needed a place to ask, come and ask questions. So this alternating has been very good. And tutorials, I really like it when the beginners teach them because their wounds are fresh. They have recently <laughs> had to re-explain to themselves um, what a path means, what this documentation is actually saying, what is all this technical jargon. So they, ex they feel explain it much more simply and plainly than the experts do. So I actually somewhat force, like every my rotation now I'm trying to do is everyone at BioHub with a GitHub account um, can give a tutorial. Tutorial, intro to anything. We've done R, fax plots in R, we've done illustrator figures, we've done uh, deep learning, we've done, uh, yeah, lots of different things. So, um, yeah, that has, I think, been really, really effective. So, besides um, cupcakes and coding, well, I keep saying cupcakes, it's croissants and coding now. So, we've started another group called Donuts and Development, the next level of cupcakes and coding, which has also, uh, we've only done this for about a month now, um, but I think it's been in the, in, like, talks for some time. And it's actually been pretty effective. So similarly, as, as Cupcakes and Coding alternates between a um, closed and an open problem of tut a tutorial and office hours, Donuts and Development alternates also between tutorials and a code and tell, which is like a code review. Um, but we don't say code review because we don't want to be intimidating. And um, no, for real. Like the, I think p when people see like, oh, I just want to like show code and get feedback versus like a review, I think it can be... If you're not in the software development life cycle, it's not uh, a term that feels nice, I think. So this has been good. Um, so we yeah, have, it's like 30, 30-ish lines of code that you could present at Code and Tell. Um, and yeah, it's been pretty, it's been quite good. Um, I've been uh, pretty enjoy enjoying it a lot. I think at BioHub we have a lot of people coding um, and a lot of people are learning to code, but not, um, but people are doing a lot of solo coding, I think similar in academic settings. So I, and I do a lot of solo coding, like that of course, like the first in a while that I really had like code reviews. So, uh, which is good, but it's, um, to me, success of cupcakes and coding and donuts and development is not just people getting feedback on their code and improving their code, but also people coming to these informal sessions and saying, oh, I remember so-and-so Phoenix presented about parallelization like two months ago, and I think this could be paralyzed. I should go talk to her about that. Like these kind of really intangible um, informal conversations or people talk and they say, oh yeah, I can help you with that project. People, uh, some on computational my cross could be other people on like device control, bioengineering teams, right? Like those are really different Teams, they don't talk to each other as much as they could, but they're still writing code that has commonality. So with BioHub being, um, I forgot to mention this, about 120 people total, not including investigators, like staff local. Um, it's enough of a like small enough community that people can know each other and each other's faces, but not necessarily know what they work on if they're not in contact often. So this, is a gr this has been a really, really successful forum for um, people who are coding uh, whether they consider themselves a beginner or not, um, to learn from one another. Uh, the other th thing for office hours I've learned for this cupcakes and croissants and coding is that you have to have a rotation of helpers. Um, I've expended a lot of social capital <laughs> the days of office hours saying like, hey, uh, so-and-so has this problem, can, can you come help them? Um, which has been fine, but um, is not so super sustainable. Um, <sighs> Yeah, so anyway, enough about training. Uh, I will just do this slide about my research. So my research, uh, my focus is to um, find a common langu language um, and embedding of 
types across many species. So we have a project at CZ BioHub um, called Tabula Maris and Tabula other stuff. And uh, we have um, really carefully annotated cells from many different species, uh, sorry, from many different cell types and organs from a mouse. And so what I aim to do is to, given a new species and a new um, data set, to annotate that um, data set based on the cell types from the reference. But uh, reference genomes are okay. Reference annotations are really what I think get you um, when it comes to gene annotations and um, gene expression. So my goal is to do this in a um, reference-free way. Uh, basically, we ignore the genome and we ignore um, genes, because who believes in genes anyway? It's just a model. Some models are wrong. Most models are wrong, some are useful. And uh, ignore the genome, uh, use, just chop up our uh, RNA sequencing reads into KMERS. We can re-encode, uh, translate these KMERS into protein. We can re-encode them into a lossy alphabet, um, hash these, we get an integer, and then compare two cells on their hashes. If you want more details, please come talk to me. Uh, basically, if you look at, uh, Compared to like vanilla RNA, what I would call vanilla single cell RNA sequencing, if you count genes and get a vector of genes and do clustering, dimensionality, direction, blah, 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 what you get, um, you, if you do KMER presence absence, just a small subset of KMERs, you actually get something very, very similar to if you looked at the whole uh, gene expression data set. So on to next slow at CZ BioHub. Um, so since I want to do stuff a lot of, with a lot of creatures, I need to be able to swap out genomes really easily, swap out data sets really easily. And um, so I had started uh, writing my own uh, RNA-seq pipeline and then decided I didn't actually want to maintain the whole thing. So um, since then, so this is from uh, a couple of days ago, but already I think if we search for Nexpo, we have quite a few pipelines either that are written at BioHub or forked or um, whatnot. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, just a brief adventure in a previous workflow of managers. I was using something called Reflow. I asked like, what's wrong with my if, else if statement? It looks fine compared to your documentation. Uh, and they're like, oh, sorry, we didn't make a release. Um, since this, it's like 0.6.8. Made in August, February 25th, August, last release. And so, of course, 20, same day, it's like, hey, so I'm trying to build this. <laughs> I'm not able to build this. There's some weird dependency. I can't figure it out. Um, can you help? Later. <laughs> July, yeah, February and this, they um, finally um, responded with when they could have a new release. Um, and started some uh, reflow or like building instructions. Uh, anyway, I had switched to the next level by then. If that, but that, like, that was really the straw that ended it for me. Um, so timeline of next slot's easy bio hub. First starts with the fireworks of Phil's visit in uh, October, but I was still using reflow then. <laughs> and uh, I. So yeah, so that happened February, and I was like, oh, I can't do this anymore. So I started looking at um, Nextflow and started committing to this project that's called K-Mermaid Now. And uh, a month, month later, uh, I ran an internal Nextflow tutorial at Biohub that basically just used NF Hack 18 and then in the morning, and then the afternoon was supposed to be write your own pipeline, but then everyone skipped it. So it was just the tutorial. But um, I think, so I'll uh, go through a bit of the timing. Sorry, keynote is a little weird about this. So uh, right after that, people started, other people, I think most importantly, not me, started writing uh, uh, Nextflow pipelines using an, the NF Core template. Uh, Lucy is an um, excellent uh, phylogenetic scientist. Kalani had actually come to Biohub as a research assistant, assistant with lit, like no computational experience. And I'm very proud that she is now off to a computational PhD program. Uh, June apparently was like my month of Nextflow because like <laughs> I looked back at my commits uh, and it was just like one day after another. Uh, also, we had a um, intern, a uh, high school intern actually, who helped work on a um, FASTQ concatenation uh, pipeline for cross multiple lanes, things like that. 
Um, Phoenix here started a split Kmer analysis that is a uh, pipeline that components of that are now part of Kmermaid or a PR to Kmermaid, we're almost merging. Uh, we started, uh, so Clarissa, uh, also an intern, started making a Nextflow tracer pipeline for T cell receptor stuff from RNA seq. Um, and also very proud, so Kalani took this pipeline she wrote and uh, taught how to, like, was done, like, taught how to use it. This is someone who, again, two years of experience, um, was able to do this and teach how to use it in, like, yeah, three months or so. So really excellent. The on-ramp is quite good. Uh, Clarissa is now working on another uh, next level pipeline called for Bracer. And uh, yeah, Phoenix has contributed uh, split Kmer to Kmermaid and then had um, Pranathi is an excellent um, software engineer. Saba is an um, uh, intern. Yeah, and Phoenix also an excellent software engineer. Um, yeah, so we've had like a lot of people just able to pick up and contribute quite quickly. Uh, it is, I haven't shown you the insides, but um, I really love this <laughs> screenshot of Kalani's commits to her Nextflow pipeline. <laughs> um, like this is fine, <laughs> this is working. I'm so close, like this, they work flawlessly on this file. Uh, she let me use this, I let her know. Uh, so it's, it, I'm showing just like the glamorous stuff of, um, you know, in a few months we had this working, but as you know, it's not so easy. Um, so it does take some effort, um, but you can make it through. Um, so yeah, I just want to stop there and say thank you to um, Paolo for inviting me, the NF Core team, um, Nextflow team for um, hosting, um, being so welcoming, um, and to all of Biohub as well. Any questions? Okay, uh, give me some oh, sorry, he had his hand raised. I'm gonna. Uh, Your Twitch account? Do you stream like Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, so yeah, for a time I was live streaming yeah, bioinformatics. So I'd live stream either me programming or pair programming with someone or an interview with a scientist. I did a conference last year where I live streamed the poster session, like me talking to people. I had some plants, like people I talked to beforehand that I knew would let me do it. Um, and I might start up again. It was pretty fun, um, actually. Like I get, I had some regulars, so that was cool. Um, and but it is a lot. Of, it's a lot of work. Like it's a full half day commitment. If you're even if you're doing just like a two hour stream, you really have to commit like the four hours for the social media stuff, for the post processing, pre processing things. So um, it is a commitment. But yeah, I think I have some old videos up there. I also posted everything to YouTube afterwards, so you can take a look at that. Any other questions? Did you have one? No? Oh, sorry, and you? You're using the Kmers to do that clustering model? Yeah. Did you compare that to using James? Uh, that's in the works. It's in the works, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you manage to convince some vanilla users to use, for example, Markdown instead of Word? <laughs> um, so for uh, cupping and coding, um, to do a tutorial, people have to upload a, a either a Markdown file or IPython Jupyter Notebook or uh, like a Spider Markdown file um, to their to do their lesson. Uh, yeah. Um, so th that's so they're forced to practice Markdown or and Git and GitHub. Um, so yeah, there's people who were like, they just uploaded files to the web interface, um, but like they still got that practice of what is a pull request and all that. Yeah? So are all the different workflows that you're developing, like Bracer and Tracer stuff with the team at, at Biohub, is it all in this Power PC architecture, or are you also able to... Oh, most, most of that is just is just x86. The Power PC stuff, we're probably gonna have to port after. We're, you know, because I mean, all our laptops are x86, so we're gonna develop an x86 first. Do you have a PowerPC architecture too? No, I was just saying oh, okay. that all that work on development would get stuck behind the no. barrier. No, yeah. Because all the AWS machines are all x86 too, so if we're going to do cloud. 
Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you.